All right. Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome, everybody. I think it's uh, it's time. So uh, get yourself set up. If your cameras, microphones aren't set up, if you haven't muted yourself, take a second to mute yourself. We're going to start by allowing the feet to touch. And whether the feet are together or 45 degrees doesn't really matter. But then allow your tailbone to sink. Push the back of your head top up. Relax your shoulders. And then bring your hands together in the center. And then internally, take a second to calibrate. So, inwardly, <clears throat> move your mind to the center. Grip your feet. Relax your brow. Open your vision. Open your nostrils sideways. <clears throat> Feel that you can expand your sinuses to breathe more air. Keep the tongue connected to the roof of the mouth. We want the chest to be hollow so it's not pushing up this way, but instead relaxed. Use the center to support so the tailbone is relaxed. And then from here, we're going to open to the side and we're just going to start with some breathing. So inhale and we're going to make this like a stretch. So reaching all the way up and then reaching all the way out to the sides. Make the breathing match the movement. So like a stretch in the morning when you wake up, Pressing all the way up, reaching all the way to the sides, all the way back down. You can go at your own pace. Whatever pace you're going at, slow down just a little bit. Make your breathing longer. We'll do three more, wherever you're at. And when you reach the end, bring your feet back together in the center, bring your hands back together. And then when you move your mind into the navel, your body will adjust, will calibrate on its own. <clears throat> so I like to teach Tai Chi principles. The form that we work on is a very specific form, but all the principles that we talk about in Tai Chi Harmony apply to everything. So starting from the top, we want to have our, our energy 
going up so that we're, our body is stretched to its full extent without extending the chin, without pushing up this way, we wanna keep the chin tucked. So that's from the top. And then moving downwards, the brow, we wanna have the brow relaxed so that it's open. We wanna open the vision so that we can see clearly, open the nostrils and relax the face, relax the jaw and have the tongue connected to the upper palate. <clears throat> you should feel like you're developing saliva, uh, cultivating saliva. When you have that, just simply swallow. And also we have a half smile as the minimum. It's uh, difficult to demonstrate with, with all of this facial hair, but you should be able to uh, activate just the corners of the mouth. Moving from there, the ears are lined up with the shoulders so that, that even this can be adjusted to here. Shoulders are rolled back and relaxed. And we say the chest is hollow. So that means from this position, if we have this round shape that it feels round continuously through the whole structure and not this way. So allow the chest to relax as well. <clears throat> the shoulders are relaxed, elbows are relaxed, wrists are relaxed, and the base of the palms are resting gently together. The stomach is supporting, we're using this dantian as a central structural support. That means that the back can be relaxed. The back is actually riding on top of the dantian. This whole area is supporting our back. <clears throat> we have shekwa, the insides of the legs are folding inwards so the energy goes down. The knees, lightly bent. <clears throat> Ankles should feel as if they're expanding. So as if the power is going out to the sides, forwards and back. And then the feet are gripping the ground, creating an expanded shape in the foot. So all of these Tai Chi ideas, these are Tai Chi principles. Any style of Tai Chi that you study, if you study a Chen style, Yang style, Wu style, Sun style, all of these same ideas apply, which means if you study yoga, if you like to surf, if you're into golfing, if you like to work in the kitchen or in the garage, all of these same ideas you can apply when you're doing things. We happen to study the Tai Chi form, the Tai Chi Chuan, which is a boxing art. And so we use this when talking about dealing with power from an opponent. We use the right hand, the left hand, using the legs, but we can apply these same principles when, we, when we're working, when you have to lift something very heavy. My teacher TC said, we live in a time where we don't have to defend our land in, in uh, feudal wars. So the real value of Tai Chi, when we, when we study Tai Chi Chuan, the fist form, doesn't come from our ability to fight. It comes from our ability to, to defend ourselves against gravity, defend ourselves when we order so many things from Amazon, we have to pick it up and <clears throat> carry it inside. So this is the real value of Tai Chi. So all of these ideas, when we start in, in Tai Chi Harmony, uh, see how many that you can remember while we practice the form. Uh, we're gonna warm up just a little bit first, and then we're gonna do the entire uh, first, second, and third section of the form, and then we'll come back and we'll analyze the posture. So just relax, take your right hand, reach across to your left ear, reaching out to the side, push up through your head top, and I'll turn this way so that you can see Line up your fingers, your nose, and this far elbow in one line, and then stretching as if you're reaching out and pulling this elbow back. Keep the head top up and then relax, come back to the center. This is with the same breathing that we started with, the long, relaxed breathing. So now on the other side, reach, Breathing deep, extend like you're reaching all the way through. Put everything in a straight line. Don't let it fold forward. Too far back is also too much. And then relax, come back to the center, <clears throat> breathing again. We're gonna turn around uh, the head and neck. So you can think of just rolling your head and neck, or you can think of extending power through the head top. So you should feel the difference and it's your stretch 
By the way, if you hear sound when you do this, uh, that's okay. If you hear crinkling paper, no problem. If you hear crunching glass, that's a sign to back off. Change directions if you haven't already. And remember, this is your stretch. So do the long and relaxed breathing that we started with. And when you feel an area that's tight because you've been sleeping on it incorrectly, you can stop in that area, stretch a little bit more, pull your shoulder away from the neck, turn the other direction, keep the shoulders aligned, <clears throat> come back to the center, take a deep breath. We're gonna do a few shoulder rolls. With this one, I want, want to make sure that the feeling is coming from your center so that you're moving the ribs. Imagine the rib cage like an accordion is opening and closing with each one. And that as you breathe with the same long, relaxed, expanded breathing that we started with, you can actually open the rib cage more and expand your shoulder roll. So feel your collarbones, these bones right here, and feel how they move underneath the skin. And then on the back, you have shoulder blades, these things here. So feel how the skin moves over top of them. If you haven't changed directions, change directions. If you know what your rib cage looks like, imagine the spaces between the ribs as you expand, breathing, opening. And then come back to the center. <clears throat> We're going to turn uh, a little bit around the waist. So as if you're, you have a circle and you want to have your hips draw all points on the circle. And the same thing, we want to keep the neck straight. I would say keep the back straight, but that's, that's a challenging uh, concept. <clears throat> Remember to breathe, same long breathing that we started with. <clears throat> and then when you come back to the center uh, for the legs, we're gonna take the hands, and rub them together. This is like Mr. Miyagi from the Karate Kid. Until you feel warmth, see if you can make them hot. And then we're gonna place them on the knees. And I wanna want you to feel that you can transfer that heat into the tendons around your kneecaps, into the skin that's there, and push your kneecaps down and away from your thighs, as if you're smearing the skin, pushing the, the fascia, like you wanna push your kneecaps down towards your feet, use as much pressure as you feel comfortable with. Take a deep breath, rip your feet, lift your head top up first, coming back upright. <clears throat> We're gonna rip one foot and turn some circles with the ankle, change the other direction. And then push the toe forward like you're reaching with your toe, keep your balance. And then tilt your toe all the way up like you're trying to point it towards your nose. Push all the way forward, stretch. Come back to the center. Grip the foot. This is the same long breathing that we started with, so it's relaxed. <clears throat> Turn some circles one way, change directions, go the other way. And then pointing your toe, pushing your toe forward like you're trying to reach something. And then relax, turn your toe all the way up towards the nose. Push your toe all the way out. Back up. And then <clears throat> relax. Let's do two, we're gonna do two more things. One more stretch and one more Qigong before we, we continue. The next one is uh, from, if you have your feet shoulder width wide, and you turn 45 degrees, putting one foot forward, push your tailbone back. You can use this supporting leg for balance if you like, keeping the toe pointed upwards. I want you to push your tailbone away and reach your hand, straighten your back and neck. If you can look up, that's great. Remember to breathe. 
And then when you're ready, grip your standing foot, the head top comes up first. We're gonna change on the other side, turning, grip the foot, extend the other leg, push the tailbone away. You can use your, your standing leg to support. Breathing deep. Stretch your whole torso as well. Keep the toe pointed up. When you're ready, grip the ground, sink the tailbone, push up through the head top, standing up. <clears throat> Very good. We'll do one more. Uh, earlier, we did a, an exercise. You know, we can do uh, two more. Let's just turn. This swing hands exercise contains a general idea for Tai Chi, where we talk about the center, the center line, the central axle. So if we practice Tai Chi as martial art, and we like to do the martial art application for striking, we can look to this sort of swing hands for a relaxed power. If we turn and we turn over the shoulder, this kind of power is a full body power, right? So turning around the center and keeping the center line straight. Try to shift from one side to the other and then come back to the center and keep everything at the base. You're, keep working, keep turning. Hips, knees, and ankles are locked. And so earlier we talked about the rib cage. We can do shoulder rolls, opening the rib cage. This is a vital, uh, area of our, of our body that's difficult to condition. There's uh, many yogas out there. We're gonna practice one today <clears throat> from a Bhagavad routine called silk reeling. So if you take a horse stance, whatever you feel comfortable with, and we're gonna take one hand and as if you're scooping into something just below your knee and then raising it up over top of your head. I'm keeping this hand on my center for now. So scooping down, Raising up. And so this is, again, it's timed with the breathing. And also I want you to feel, we're talking about the rib cage. So when I'm doing this, I'm closing my body. You see my arm doesn't move very much. It's not, I'm not scooping with my arm. I'm using my torso specifically through my rib cage to scoop. And then here, as if I'm lifting something with my forearm this way, scoop. And we haven't got to the complex part yet. Very good, scoop, press up, scoop. As if you're using your rib cage like an accordion here to open and close on the side. And then we're gonna add the other hand. So as this one scoops under, the other one is lifting. They're gonna form a yin and yang. So now this one lifts up and the other one presses down, turning up, scoop, press. So remember to use your torso. You're using your rib cage to make the power. Breathing deep, expand the side. What's happening with the hands? Let's take a break for a second. Bring everything back to the center. So on this exercise, we're gonna do the other side to balance it out. I want you to feel that we're using this inside. You can even imagine if there's some kind of webbing that goes between here, that when you open, you can think of it as your chi, that this is lifting here because the torso is opening. So let's try the other side. By the way, we're gonna bring this back into Tai Chi. When we talk about uh, you, Yuan Chuan, so Jade Lady uh, working at the shuttle, we have this same, can use this same body power to, to open and press. <clears throat> let's try the other side. It may actually be easier when you take your horse stance to turn 45 degrees. So now with the, the other side, the same scooping. And then when we lift, open the torso, scoop and lift. And you can imagine that you're painting the inside of a sphere or an egg. 
So you get to the top, and then there's a half circle, and then lifting. And then add the other hand. So when one hand is going down, the other hand is coming up. And then they change. As this hand rolls, the one hand presses down. So scoop, turn. So use your whole torso, long breathing, the same breathing that we started with. When you're ready, come back to the center, <clears throat> take a deep breath. What are the hands doing without using the feet? It's as if we're picking, there's water and you like to scoop the water and bring it up this way. And then we turn the hand away to protect here. So then the other hand doing the same, brings the water up, this one coming up. We can think of it, the, the name for it is Chan Si. The same as when we have Tai Chi, when we practice this exercise, the power going between the fingertips through the back, as if the arms are connected. If you relax your shoulders, you should feel the connection between the hands. <clears throat> so in this next particular exercise, we're simply... If you've ever seen anyone make noodles, if you've ever seen anyone do cotton candy, right, the same type of, but I'm using my spine and my rib cage to make the power. We'll bring it back to Tai Chi when we look at Jay's lady threading the shuttle. Before we continue, anyone have thoughts, uh, questions, comments? Okay, before we continue, uh, let's, uh, <clears throat> we're going to do the first, second, and third section. So if you get lost, just hang in there. Always, you can come back to roll back, look left, glance right, press, all of this different, these different exercises repeating through the form. I'm going to start facing the other direction. When I do, I'll try to make the form larger so that you can see it. In the meantime, just hang in there, focus on the Tai Chi ideas that we talked about, the center line structure, the <clears throat> movement of the <clears throat> rib cage, gripping the feet, long breathing. So starting from the center, bring your hands together in the center. Bring your mind back to the center. We're gonna start by opening shoulder width wide. Relax your tailbone so that it's sinking and send power all the way out to the fingertips and then letting it settle as if you have a sheet or a blanket. And then the arms float as if you're sitting in the hot tub, floating in the ocean, in the pool. And this is Tai Chi, Chi Chi. From here, we're drawing one circle on the right side to catch, stepping square forward. This is ward off. On the left side, draw one circle. Step forward square, ward off. The same long breathing that we started with, this is roll back. If you know how to turn your feet, turn your feet accurately. Otherwise, focus on your breathing and your center press. Push, look left, glance right, double press, split, this is the owl show, is hook, hands and feet moving harmoniously, dampian, single whip. Turn the feet 90 degrees to the north. This is T saw. Stepping square, song sheet. This is lift hands to up posture. We're going to turn 90 degrees to the west. 
This is Crane opening the wings. Play the harp, solway, pipa. Brush and press. Square step back. This is a repetition of crane opening the wings. Standing on one foot, turning. Play the harp, brush and press. We're going to go right to holding the moon in the chest, sometimes translated as embrace the moon. The left hand covers, right hand comes up through the center, stepping and pressing at the same time. Only one Ban Lan Shui, pressing to the corner. Grip your feet, breathing deep, this is open. Lan, punch, Shui. Roof on, so be. Keep the center line straight, press once, twice. We're gonna turn 90 degrees. This is return tiger to mountain. Right foot goes to the left. Left foot, kobu or T-step. Step to the square, palm press to the center, breathing deep. This is roll back. Join the palms together. Press. Push. Look left. Glance right. Schwang on is double press. Turning 90 degrees. If you know how to turn your feet, turn them accurately. Split. Hook, this is turn back to look at the moon. You can take as many steps as you need. The left hand covers, the right hand covers. Left hand is spear fist through the center. Turn back to look at the moon. This is repulse the monkey, bow the inhale. Number one, press. Number two, step back. Scoop, press to the center. Scoop, you can look to check to make sure that it's clear and then press your focus forward. Breathing deep, this is share faith, diagonal flying. Stepping like a sideways ward off. We're gonna continue the arc this is high knee zang, it's needle at the bottom of the C. Keep your back and neck straight. You don't have to sink super low. Sen Tong Bei. Turning. Block, punch, kick. Stepping square. Breathing deep, this is long, open. Shui is punch. Looking forward, keep your head top upright. This is Di Bu Hua. Shang Bu Li. Change step, roll back, return to natural breathing. Look left. Glance right. Double press. Horizontal split hands. Come, Lia So. We have hook. Side whip is parallel. And this is cloud hands in the second section. So breathing, press right. Turning, press and step left. Breathing, this is number two, press, press and step. Number three, press, 
step and press. Take a deep breath. This is hook. Corner whip, we're turning 90 degrees. This is Gao Tan Ma. Cover. Step and reach to the center. And then turn, unwinding. And now stepping back, reaching forward. Grip the ground, turning. Gao Tan Ma number two. And now when we turn, Scoop, brush, step, and press. Brush knee, grip the ground, breathing deep, C-step. Palm press to the center. Brush knee, grip the ground, right past the ear, straight step, punch. Rock step, turning 180, this is block. Punch, kick, step square, breathing deep, long, open, shui, punch. Zou hua is left, deflect, grip the standing foot, this is open and kick. Da li is the big roll back. Adjust your feet accurately. Embrace the tiger. Big roll back number two. Embrace the tiger. The left foot steps behind the right. Arms form half circles. This is scoop the moon from the ocean. The power is continuously returning. Air foam, going air. Stepping back, pull with the left side, kick with the left side. We're gonna turn 360. One, two, three steps. This time, pull with the right side, kick right side. Block, punch, kick. Stepping square, back on the cardinal direction. Breathing deep, open, focus the power to a punch. Roof on. Turning around the center, press, press. Embrace tiger, return to mountain. The right foot steps left, covering the top, form a T. Step to the square, palm press to the center, breathing deep to roll back. These are the eight basic movements. So if you can't see your screen, that's okay. Press, push, look left, <clears throat> glance right, double press. Horizontal split hands. We're facing east. By the way, we're into the third section. So you may feel warm. As you do, you can adjust your breathing. This is wild horse parts its mane. Step square and expand. Number two, wild horse parts its mane. Number three. Wild horse. Breathing again, we return right back to roll back. Adjust your feet accurately. Adjust your breathing accurately. The more energy you make, the more you like to move fast. You can feel the energy and continue at the same pace. Turning. Hook. This is a side whip. And this is similar to what we looked at in the beginning. This is Jade Lady working at the show. Stepping, press, forward. 
looking first, opening, scoop underneath, and then press. Looking to the third corner, sometimes called four corners, stepping, press, breathing deep, looking, stepping behind, open with the right hand, scoop, lift, and press. Take a deep breath. This is left grasp the sparrow's tail with the right press. Stepping forward into G. Breathing again. Ah. So, ooh. Yo, pan. Schwan. Ah. Split, hook. This is corner whip. So we're turning 90 degrees. This is the first snake creeping down. So we come across and when we return, we return back to the center, standing on the left foot, raising the right side. This is Jinji Doli. And now opening Stepping back, rip the feet. The left side raises. Chin Chi Do Li. Right into repulse the monkey. Scoop, look, press forward. Breathing. Right hand scoops. Opening. Press forward. Scoop, step, press. Diagonal flying in the third section. Casting the arm, shoulder bump, expanding. Needle at the bottom of the C in the third section is your left hand and your right foot. San Tong Bay, stepping forward. Turning 180, grip the ground, breathing deep. Block, punch, and kick. Step square. Open. Just enough to deliver power. Keep your head top upright. Your tailbone is sinking. When you come back upright, sharing pool, you change step and roll back. Breathing deep. Keep your center line straight. Pressing to the center. Push. Look left. Glance right. Double press. Adjust your breathing. Take longer inhales. When you feel warm from making chi, you can continue to practice hook. This is a side whip. And this is cloud hands in the third section. So we press and then step and press. Press. Press and step. Press. Long breathing, power goes out. A spiral for a hook. Turning, this is side with corner with, turning 90 degrees, continue turning the center line, the right hand crosses over, left hand is spear fist. This is snake flashes its tongue. We're gonna turn 180, pull right, kick right, cross kick, step, brush, step square. Facing forward, this is a half. Change step. Breathing again, this is roll back. Pressing straight forward. Look left. Glance right. 
double press. Almost there. Horizontal split hands. Hook. This is another corner whip turning 90 degrees. This is the second snake creeping down. And when we return this time, stepping due west, step up to seven stars. We're gonna turn 90 degrees facing north. Four, Schwan, Sen, Ba, Hu. Turning 184, Bai, Li, An. Wong Gong Sur Hu is open the bow to shoot a tiger. Block, punch, kick. We're facing west so that when we do Lan, Shui, Ru Hong, press, press. Return tiger to mountain. We're facing north again, blocking, punch right, punch left. Bring the whole left side back to the center. Put your mind back into the center. Take a deep breath. <clears throat> now, just walk. And <clears throat> you can put your hands on your lower back, something like this. But just take a second to walk. When you finish meditation, when you finish practicing Tai Chi, when you do Qigong yoga, take a second afterwards to process the energy. Do the long breathing that we started with. So when you're ready, come back to the center and we'll continue. <clears throat> Before we continue, anyone have thoughts, questions, comments? It's, it's, uh, it's good when, you, when you're practicing. Uh, if you, if you sit, in, sit in meditation for some time when you get up, don't move around right away. You may have a lot of energy. Uh, and you have to use your mind to overcome that. Even if you do some type of static standing meditation or like we just practice Tai Chi for some time, when you're practicing like that, uh, the same thing, if you're doing a lot of Kung Fu, don't just stop. Uh, after you generate the Chi, after you make energy, take some time, allow it to, to go through the body. And so the same thing when you're meditating, right when you come out of it, no sudden movements. It's just like starting a car. If, you, if anyone here has ever lived in a place where it's uh, very cold and you try to start a car when it's too cold, it's, uh, no, it's no fun. It can be dangerous to the components. So uh, if there's no questions, we're gonna continue. We're gonna look at something from the third section that's based off of the Qigong that we were doing earlier this morning to open the ribs. So uh, let's actually go back and revisit that Qigong and then we're going to look at the uh, Yuan Chuan. So, so if I face the other direction, if you just watch a few times first before you before you practice, the idea is I'm making it's a figure eight with one side is flat. So scooping, coming up and back. And the idea is that I want to open these the ribs here on the side so that this when I'm when I'm here. I'm not necessarily raising the whole structure. My tailbone can be seated in a deeper stance, but I want to open the ribs as such. So breathing, scooping. And what's the other hand doing? It's the opposite. So as one is going down, the other is coming up, and then they interchange. One is on the inside, the other is outside. This rolls up from the ribs, breathing. So you can think of if you've ever had to coil a cable, right, or some rope, or like I said, if you prepare some type of uh, noodles, uh, cotton candy, uh, some type of mochi, uh, molasses candy has this same type of action. So try some on the other side. So now the same is if we scoop and we're bringing it up and we want to use the, the body to, to unroll the whole thing. The same thing closing. 
So we open and close using the side of the torso. And then the other hand following, like a yin and yang, pressing down, lifting up. So feel your ribs open and close and open, lifting and pressing. Try some on the other side. Breathing, scoop, lift. See if you can feel it to your sternum, all the way across to the center of your chest, to your spine, that you can open all the cartilage between all of the ribs because you can unroll the, the rib cage as such. So take a break for a second, do some long breathing like we started with. This is something that happens with people as we age. Uh, you ever give a hug to, to a very old person and you can feel their, their sternum. It's, that's generally because their skin and their muscle has deteriorated. But we wanna to try to keep the cartilage in the rib cage soft so that it's, it's nice and flexible. Uh, in the Tao Te Ching, it says, uh, that which is, is old and near death is brittle. And it says that which is young and has life is, is pliable and flexible. So this idea to open the, the rib cage, from a martial arts perspective, if your rib cage is, is nice and flexible, when somebody hits you, it can, can uh, expand the energy, disperse the energy. For the rest of us, for longer breathing to open up all the channels. <clears throat> so now let's look at something from the Tai Chi form, which is you, Yan, Tron, So Jade Lady opening the show. And we're gonna use that same expanding power in the ribs to press. So uh, starting facing, this other direction. We're just going to turn many times. We're doing the same exercise uh, turning. So if we start facing north and we have hook and we have side whip, this first movement is like a scoop. We're reaching under and then we're going to bring the left side under to support. So as this is lifting, this hand is here. And then that same exercise, we're going to unroll the body to press. And so now looking over your shoulder first, back to the corner, we're going to step back to the corner backwards and open the right hand as if we're lassoing something. And now the same, once we get around it, we're going to open the rib cage in the same way and press. Number three, don't worry, we're going to repeat these many times. We're just practicing right now. So step forward. And then the same thing, these ribs will open as we press. Keep your shoulder relaxed. Turning to look first to the next corner, we're gonna step back, opening the hand to spiral. And then once it's underneath, open. Grip the feet, looking to the next corner. Step forward, torso. Breathing, look, step, scoop, and press. So there's only two turns. This may be confusing, by the way. This is a, uh, one of the more difficult patterns to, to do. If you've studied it before, just uh, uh, you can practice. But if you haven't, uh, this, this one can be very confusing. So there's only two movements. We're turning 90 and we're turning 270. So if I'm facing in this direction, the 90 degree turn is if I want to turn to the side, I'm scooping and I step and press. The 270 degree one means I'm going to be facing that way, but I'm going to turn the long direction around, right? So instead of just turning 90 to face in this direction, I'm going to actually turn this way to press. So there's only two. We're turning 90 and 270. Yes, very confusing. Just hang in there. <clears throat> if we start facing the north and we have hook and whip, we're turning northeast, scoop, scoop, press. So now turning 270 backwards. Now turning 90 to the next corner. turning 270 backwards. 
90 to the next corner. Yes, no, maybe you feel something. Can you go the other direction? No, don't do that, it's too confusing. Okay, so let's go from the beginning. We'll go slow. We'll do the first couple of them slow. Don't worry if you can't see because we're gonna keep, we're gonna continue to turn. So from here, hook with my right hand and right foot moving, and then my left hand and left foot follow up. From here, I'm gonna pivot around my left forearm, opening the ribs and stepping forward to press. Next, look over your left shoulder, looking behind before you step. And then when you step, we're gonna take the same hand to open. And the same thing, we wanna get underneath like we're lifting something up. And then we're gonna use the torso to turn to press. Bring everything back to the center closing. You can think of this as either chicken step or ravens are cold in the winter. This is just the toe pointing to the ground. And from here, everything is closed. We can step forward, left hand and left foot. And now turn the palms, press. Look over your left shoulder, step back to the corner, open the right hand scoop, turn. Turn 90. Turning 270. Turning 90 is like almost like a wind up for a pitch. <clears throat> uh, before we continue, questions, thoughts, comments. So what's the meaning of this uh, posture is if power is coming towards us, the, the analogy that I like to use is there's something that's going to close, right? You have a, you can imagine there's a freezer, right? Uh, one of the shelf type freezers that's horizontal this way, not a standing refrigerator, but a freezer pack. And so if that's going to close and it's, let's say it's very heavy. The first thing is if we want to try to catch it, you reach out with your hand. And then if you need to get something inside, you use your other hand to support it. And while you're supporting it, you can reach in to take. This is the, the most basic. From a martial arts perspective is if the other person has their weapons, right? You can scoop one weapon out of the way. The first and second weapon get moved by the, the other arm and we press. So it has this sort of turning that we looked at earlier in the Qigong from the Bagua exercise. Another thing that my teacher would say is this, imagine that you have some darts. So if I face this direction and I have darts and I wanna throw them and hit the exact target with the darts, first I, I bring the power up, I'm turning them inwards first and then pressing forward. So, but you can use your whole structure to do this. So the power comes up, coils in and forward. So breathing, lift your palms, turn them, turn them towards yourself and then rolling your fingertips, press away from yourself. So inhaling, scoop, turn, press. And we can think of this as one hand on the top and the other hand is on the bottom, the top one horizontal, vertical. You don't have to practice this way. This gives you a very simple Tai Chi idea for some rules to follow. Technically, you could press where one is at an angle. You could technically press where they're both going up. This isn't uh, just when you go to the competition, when you, when you press like this, maybe you like to show the perfect form. Uh, you can practice any way that you like. So you have hook, you have single whip. So here, this is scoop, scoop, and then we turn the palms, press, like you're throwing the darts. If you wanna have the power, let's look at the bag if we're working with this. The idea is my opponent is here and his guard is up. So I'm, I wanna clear, clear this turning. All the power comes out through that turn. So 
Instead of having to wind up, we talk about martial arts, we talk about Kung Fu. In the movies, they have to recoil, right, to make a big punch. Uh, we looked earlier at something. If you uh, uh, ever play old school video games, they have this big kind of uppercut, right? Very funny, very exaggerated. We don't need to do that by using what we had said, the legs, using the spine and using the torso. Even if there's not a lot of distance between us and the opponent, we can make a lot of power, right? So this kind of power coming. Uh, met, uh, how many here are old enough to remember Bruce Lee and the one inch punch, right? This is, this is uh, a, a very common concept in Chinese martial arts. It was not invented by Bruce Lee. Uh, and the idea is we only have to move the Dantian a very small amount to generate the power. So when we practice the Tai Chi from here, if we're doing hook and whip, we can use this as a gauge or a sight, or if we're connected to the opponent, we can already be moving their weapon out of the way. And then the next one that comes up underneath supports, and it takes over so that while we're holding that up, we have another free hand, and that other free hand delivering the power. <clears throat> Questions, thoughts, comments, ideas. All right, the next thing, let's focus on keeping the center. Because sometimes when we turn, right, we have this sort of thing and we don't want to be lean. So even if we have a very low stance and we practice as this, when we turn, I don't want to be shifting. I want to try to keep my center straight and turning around the center as such, right? This is part of what we practice with Tai Chi movement. The difficulty is not necessarily the speed or the power, but getting the precision alignment and, and moving in a way where we don't injure our body. So let's hook, side whip, keep your center line straight, scoop, the other hand and foot come up to scoop, and then turning the palms to press. Looking to the other corner, keep your center line straight, breathing deep, open, scoop, and press. Closing, and then stepping to open, turn your palms, Press to where the power is. Looking again, 270, turning, scoop, press. Breathing deep, turn 90, close, open, press. Looking, turning, open, press. Don't worry about making power. If your structure is correct, the power will be there, press. So keeping the center line, having your feet gripping the ground, <clears throat> using your torso and your spine to help generate the wave that goes through the body. Breathing deep, stepping back, opening, scoop, press. The name for this sometimes is called four corners. Sometimes in the old Tai Chi books and amongst modern American students, it's called four corners. You can envision four corners of a square. The martial arts benefit is for the advanced students, this is a, a multi-person attack routine. So in the classics, in the, in the old martial arts books, it says, even though 1,000 attack, <clears throat> only four or five can be close at any given time. We don't necessarily use this pattern. Uh, it's coming from something more advanced from Bagua but it's using a very confusing technique to, uh, to approach the situation. If I have two opponents, one is here and one is here. If I deal with this one and I turn here, it's ar they're already expecting me. If I deal with this one and turn this way, I may you may have some type of advantage by turning in a very confusing way. So uh, we only look at four corners, but essentially that kind of turning is freestyle and we're not limited to 90 and 180, we can turn any number of directions, any number of degrees to confuse the opponent. Questions, thoughts, comments. We have just a minute left. Let's close the same way that we started with the same breathing. So take a nice comfortable stance, breathing. Make it a stretch all the way. And when you exhale, we don't fully go to empty. 
Just like your gas tank, when it starts to get low, refill. Don't let it go all the way out. Inhaling, you can expand your lung capacity. We go full, beyond the full mark. But exhale, we don't go below empty. Inhaling, inflate your whole body with air. And so make it a stretch, reach all the way. At the bottom, it's not as important, but breathing out, push your tailbone down, reach all the way to the sky, <clears throat> reach all the way out to the sides, all the way back down. Full inhales, relaxed, exhales. And for the last few, we're gonna add one more component. So I'm gonna to turn to face the other direction. Now turning from one side, the same exercise, long breathing up, turning around the center, 180 degrees, reach your arms out in line with your camera. <clears throat> breathing deep, continuous movement. You can imagine a three-dimensional clock moving in a regular fashion, breathing, And wherever you're at, it doesn't really matter. When you get to the other side of wherever you're at on the bottom, change directions. So inhaling up the other side and exhaling down the far side. We're gonna do three more of these, so make it the longest, most relaxed breaths of the whole week, inflating fully to the top. And when you're ready, when you get to the last one in the center, just let your hands float. Feel like they're so lightweight that the air underneath supports them. And bring your feet back together in the center. Bring your hands back together. The head top pushing up. The tailbone is sinking. Grip your feet. Feel the shape of your foot while your feet are gripped and then allow them to relax. <clears throat> allow the eyes to be somewhere between open and closed. Move your mind into the navel, into your dantian. Taking a long, deep breath, take a second to smile to yourself internally. Imagine all the chi, all the energy, all the movement that we did today is collecting in your dantian so that everything going to the center to one point take one long last deep breath and that's it thank you questions comments thoughts sorry we're a little bit over it's actually nine uh, looks like 9 34. so if you've got to go it's time <clears throat> your class brian otherwise good to see you yeah aaron yeah thanks I like four corners. Maybe next time I have some questions about um, the uh, footwork of the four corners. Okay, I can I can hang out for a minute. Uh, I have another class at uh, at ten, so uh, I don't know what your what your day is like. Yeah, I've got a few minutes. Okay, let's uh, let's actually continue. So so the footwork for four. What's your question first before I start talking? Okay, well. I, I see that you have a much more uh, simplified foot pattern 
I think I'm doing the same pattern. I think I'm just um, adjusting more. Uh, and, and those adjustments look like half steps or stuff. And I'm just wondering how far off I am or if I'm. OK, let's see it in principles. Okay. It's, it's on the 270 turn. All right, go for it. So we're at the first one. Yep. Then I always step back, then scoop, then lift up. I'll, I'll do it further back because you see my feet okay. is probably too close. Actually, go from the first one. If you face away from your camera, like you're starting from hook and whip. Okay. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay. I think you're adding an extra step. I think I am too. Right? So if you watch now from here, this is the first one looks very good. You have it correct. The second one, you just want to step. You're making a smaller step, which is okay. If you're just stepping to here, you want to pivot and get to here. And that's the press. You're, I think that you're stepping again with this other foot. I think so. So you should think of it as... In, in each case, the same hand and same foot are pressing forward, right? So if, I'm, if I start from here, when I scoop, same hand, same foot forward. And now when I turn, same hand, same foot forward. When I do the next one, it's the same, right? And so for whatever reason, right. the way that I've internalized it and so I'm, I'm questioning whether I should really change my whole feeling for the move is before I put my full weight on this one I'm 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 adjusting I'm measuring up to where I'm going to step before I as I yeah you can you can think of it like that as if if your opponent has something and it's there you can actually start to wedge here Right? I can use between my foot and my arm and then find where's the best place to step and press in. Right. You can, that's, that's fair. You can do it that way. Or if you catch, if you're just blocking, if your foot's already planted, I'm just shifting my center between my feet to deliver the strike. Sure. So right. you could either, <clears throat> you could do one or the other. You can step and then press, or you can step. Wait, what is it? Is it step first? and then press or step while you're pressing. They're both fair. It depends, TC would say it depends on the situation. Okay, which, which, yours, yours looks much more elegant though. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. It's uh, this, sometimes the simpler, sometimes the elegant stuff is, is not as effective as far as martial art, right? A lot of times people want to practice this very, you know, uh, hula dance kind of thing. But in real, real life, the martial art is not as, just looks like something, you know, it's not always the same. So is that, you, 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 you feel it with the step. The step is- So it could be- You don't first. have to take that, the second step, right? Yeah. yeah. So saying that you could step first and then deliver the power or deliver the power with the step, depending on the situation. Right. This is, this is also, by the way, this is the same with cloud hands. This is like a big, there's like a big mystery with cloud hands. People always wondering, when we do it cloud hands, do we step and then press, step, press, or That's true. do we press and then step? It's what, it's what, what, it's what right? Because you can make a wave, you can make wave power coming from the step, transferring out that way, or right. we can do something different where the step is there and then the power comes out, right? So, and then also you can get into, if you transfer your rear foot, many things. There's, I have a book, uh, there's a book, I think his name is Robert Tangora. And uh, he wrote a book called something like uh, Cloud Hands. And it's it's a full book just on Cloud Hands. So we can get into all that stuff. The, the key is just so you have some understanding of it. It's a lateral movement. You're defending your the snake gate, the side of the body. So if I use this track, I want to think about moving sideways, right? As opposed to many of the movements moving forward, right? And, and Jade Lady is kind of a diagonal movement. So yeah, cloud hands is just 
there's something on the side you need to sneak through and there's something there, get it out of the way and move forward into the place, something like that, yeah. No, that, 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 that's helpful for, for my question. And um, I could probably have questions on cloud hands too. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, we, how much is, is, is a void, right? A void, how much energy on a void? Okay. okay. And the, then close in. Yeah. So, so this is not necessarily as much about the power as much as it is the structure. So if I use my camera, as the center here, when I turn, anything past here is too much because my gate is open. So remember, the opponent is coming to our side, our side gate this way. And the concept is when we're turning, we want to be able to, to first see them. And so if we open here, oh, maybe my balance becomes unsettled. So this idea of Tai Chi, where we have the hands in the center here, we don't want them to go past the center on our side either. Right. So if there's a stick, right, if somebody's attacking me and this thing is, let's say there's something coming forward as such towards me. Right. Let me see if I can. You've already avoided this. This like moving somewhere. to the side. Right. Is I only need to move it to the side yeah. enough. Right? Yeah. If I move it way out here, I'm still open. So just to the point, just to here. Yeah, Once yeah. it's to here, it's okay. And so the same thing with the power. Uh, we try to keep this triangle. If you remember, TC would talk about if you if you allow your elbows to touch your ribs and then you bring your fingertips together, you look down, you see a triangular shape. That's where you're most powerful at. So when you work on the keyboard, when you cut in the kitchen, when you're working with some tool, this triangle, anytime you have to distort that shape, you lose your power. If I have a pen on my desk and I have to reach for it, right, this triangle becomes very skewed. The best thing is if I can move my center, pick up the thing and come back without losing my triangle, right? It's kind of funny. It's a little bit like T-Rex. You know, they have like the little arms. They can't really do anything. But humans, our arms, I mean, compared to our legs, Man, you gotta, you gotta, you know, like legs, and then you gotta, we have these little arms. So we're technically T Rexes. We don't want to rely too much on that kind of power. So this triangle determines your question. When we, when we turn to the side, I don't want to have it way out here. I may, if I feel like I can absorb whatever power is coming in. But then when I go to press to the side, this may start to extend that triangle too much. So. Once we turn, see how the movement carries my hand, right? The, the power is coming from my movement, not necessarily from my hand. The hand is just the, the bumper, the end result that we put on this thing, right? So we don't want to over, you can, right? If you have a clear advantage and your opponent is way out there, right, where the camera is, and I turn and I see it's so open, you can reach very far, right? You can press all the way in, something like that. Uh, but in general, if we're trying to do the correct Tai Chi, we have our circle, right? This is where your power is in the, in the center of the circle, or we can look at it as a triangle either way. It's in Shingi, we use a triangle in Tai Chi. We think of it as soft. It's, it's round. So the same thing, we don't want to have the thing get too big, right? We want to have a stay at the correct for our, uh, for the frame, for the size of Tai Chi that we're doing. If you're doing yoga, you may want to stretch and make this frame very expanded, but there's no, there's no need. The Tai Chi, if, it, if you're relaxed, the meridians will open naturally on their own, right? Just by, by relaxing without having to accomplish a, a big stretch. So, yeah. I did have one Questions. other question. Does somebody else have a question? No. Go for it. Um, and as long as you can stay, you got to go, let me know. Okay. Um, you know, from a previous class, you know, you, you drew my attention to just moving the, the soft tissue, right? Mm -hmm. Turns, you know, and, and reducing the amount of, of twisting um, over the knee, right? So, uh, for example, like cloud hands, you're, it's the same principle, right? You're keeping the hips still facing completely forward just with that soft tissue making the turn? There, you may have a little bit of turning. This, this is, that's, a, that's actually a fairly advanced question because 
when we're doing cloud hands, we may get to a point where we start to turn, but if we do, we want to ensure that everything is level, right? So, so that if this turns, it's not, it's not tilting this way and it's also not shifting out of its center. So it stays centered. It may turn, but we don't want it to shift, right? So even if it turns, we want to keep the tailbone relaxed and, and, if you try to put your ankles, knees, and hips together, and then when you turn, you can sort of feel it shift to one side a little bit, but don't let the other side raise up. Try to keep your center line aligned. There's going to be some of that, right? If when you do it correctly, the whole body is going to start to have a little bit of natural twist, but you should feel it and know you should start to feel the subtle limit, right? Of where that extent is to the right. Now. Because if you're doing it right, yeah, you can you can twist the, the knee. So there should be a little bit, but don't let it get get skewed. That's one of the one of the more advanced Tai Chi principles is the head, shoulders, and hips are always level, right? So when we're doing some type of even uh, the big rollback, this should always be level, no matter what height. We don't want it to really twist. There there may be some times where it changes when we do. Uh, needle at the bottom of the seat, but we want to try to keep that. One one teacher said, uh, actually, Gene uh, talked about like dinner plates, like you're stacking plates, right? And we don't want them to wobble. They should always be sort of stacked. Even if we go over here, right? Or, or change, we want to have that, that central structure or something, so. No, that's great. Good thing. Well, yeah, more questions. Yes, no. Okay, cool. Listen, I got, I'm going to go to, uh, I'm actually attending a class. So uh, enjoy your day. If you have questions, you can email me, text me. Like I said, I would, I would like to uh, do some, do some weekday classes. I just, my schedule has been, I'm, I'm uh, for Aaron, well, you don't really know. I've been, I've been promoted in my work. I'm a VFX supervisor now. Right. Oh, so I've been like going on set, setting up tracking markers for filming green screen stuff. Yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. That is cool. And, uh, but it's been, my schedule is kind of weird. So I want to make sure that I have, I'm just keeping it to one right now because it's, uh, it's manageable, but I'd like to in the future, uh, expand this. So cool. Thank you. All right. Uh, yeah. call me, email me, text me. I'll see you soon. See you. All right. Have a great day. Thanks guys.